Hey everybody, this is Birch. Um, we've talked before about why do comic companies do some of the things they do because they don't make sense. Now I'm not talking about things that have, uh, you know, you could, you could, they're a matter of opinion, like uh, putting this writer on like, Hey, DC hires Bendis. And some people don't like Bendis, but other people do like Bendis. So, you know, maybe it's a wash. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about things like Marvel and DC publishing like 80 comics a month each when it's clear that's more than they know what to do with. It's clear that they do not have the ability to market all those titles. And it's, um, it's, it goes back to this kind of old logic of stuffing the shelves. But that was a newsstand approach. It doesn't make as much sense in the direct market. You see a lot of comic shops just noping out of the whole thing. So why, why do they cling on to that idea? Same thing of, of we won't call it a limited series because that will hurt sales. Well, where's the proof for that? There actually, there's, there's counter evidence. There's actually a lot more evidence suggests that if you, you know, have something intended as a limited series, but you call it an ongoing, that's more irritating to, to customer. So there's a lot of things like that. And I think this, this letter, uh, this, this uh, email from a viewer kind of taps into another thing that doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense. My voice sounds super weird to me, by the way. It's all scratchy. I don't know what, uh, I need to just drink a lot of coffee or something. I, I don't know what's going on. Sounds, sounds all funky all of a sudden. Maybe I'm dying. Uh, anyway. Um, all right. So here's the mail. It says, uh, hey there, Perch. Short mail, but key question for you. Based on some of your videos in the past, I get the impression that you are not a believer in the concept of fan baiting as a marketing tactic. I am actually. It, it is. It is true. I don't. I don't deny it. It, it does happen. Do you think uh, fan baiting, if it was to be real, is effective? I see more and more studios seeming to use this, but I can't see if it actually benefits people. I suppose any controversy is good controversy to get people talking, but does that really work out? Curious to hear your thoughts. Thanks for everything you do. Um, okay. So first off, um, fan baiting. So what is fan baiting when we talk about, uh, uh, you know, this? It's it because, you know, it's important to get the definitions right of, of what exactly it is that we're talking about. So fan baiting, um, in the, it, first of all, has many meanings, okay? It doesn't just have one meaning. So, so lay, let me lay that out. But for this particular mail, what this person is talking about is fan baiting as marketing or as advertising. So this is basically when the, you know, the, the people involved with the movie, and typically this is the studios, this is the marketing people, this is the uh, writers, um, this, this is usually not the actors. Now, the actors may make some of these comments as well, but keep in mind the actors are often not coordinated with the rest of the film studio. Sometimes they are, but we're really talking about a practice that's used by the studio. And the intention there is to highlight things about the movie that are kind of intentionally controversial. And what I mean by controversial is, is kind of a shame. Um, these things are controversial, but shouldn't be. So for example, the one on people's minds is Lord of the Rings as a, a, has a diverse cast as a black female dwarf. Okay. Now, if you watch the show, the black female dwarf appears for, I, I don't know, 60 seconds total of screen time, barely present. But of that 60 seconds, I mean, just speaking for myself here, was one of the better parts of that show. Um, her character was like, had energy. That show is is dreadfully dull. And that character like actually was like, hey, you know, I, I don't know. The, the character is like kind of woke up a little bit. Um, and now I, I feel like that character probably is going to be showing up more later in the show. I don't think they would have uh, gone to all the trouble of marketing everything about that character if that was it, but they might have. That's kind of what this uh, fan baiting is talking about because very cynically, and it is sad that it's true. There are certainly some, you know, bigoted, racist, horrible people out there who are going to see that. And as we saw in the comments on my videos and, and immediately start throwing out the N word and talk about black people don't deserve to be in Lord of the Rings and Token never liked black people and why are all that kind of crap. Definitely. It's going to happen. Um, it's there's a noisy jackass segment of yes, bigoted people that exist out there. That's it's a, thankfully it is a small group. Unthankfully, social media amplifies the voices of small groups far and wide. If 
a company wants to take advantage of it. In this instance, there are people who both the company and just random fans hanging out on social media, or not fans, but just people who, who see their goal as to broadcast and amplify the voices of racists for their own gain. Their goal is to say, hey, look at this ugly racist over here. This is an ugly racist. I'm not an ugly racist, but this person is an ugly racist like me. That's not, uh, you know, that's not fan baiting. That's just lunatics on Twitter who think that the best way to, uh, you know, to combat racism and bigotry is to, you know, uh, point to themselves and try and make themselves a hero over it. I think Sean King is an example of this, but there's tons of people. Lots of people try to get on that grift. Make no mistake about it, it is a grift. But the other segment of this is that studios will fairly callously look at something and go, hey, we know that small group of bigots and racists and those people are out there. We know they're there. And so therefore, we are going to intentionally highlight kind of characters and promote certain aspects of this film that we think is going to get a reaction out of them. We're going to do that early. And you could tell it's cynical in a certain expect. You could also tell it's planned because as they roll this out, they over-index on things that you know are not, not key to the plot of the film, like with Amazon Rings of Power, they put up the the you know, they they heavily promoted this black dwarf. Again, thought the character was charming. Uh, it, 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 one of the better aspects of that show, but certainly not a main character. And that character gets promoted far more than almost all of the other characters in the show. Why? Well, odds are, granted, anything is possible, could have been a mistake. Odds are, people in the marketing department at Amazon said, we know that people are going to lose their fucking minds over having a black dwarf, and they're going to throw up uh, Token's legacy and all this other kind of stuff. They're going to say a bunch of racist things. And this is going to generate a lot of noise. People are going to retweet it, and they're going to sound like lunatics. So we are going to be the good guys in this scenario. We are going to come across... I mean, all we have to do is go, oh my God, we stand with the cast. We stand with the cast against this hate and bigotry. I, I, the hate and bigotry has no place in, in fandom. And hey, they're right. It doesn't. But you intentionally baited that behavior. You intentionally encouraged it. The statements of uh, we stand by the cast were too quick, too on the ready. I mean, within minutes in some cases, you had, you know, studio prepared statements going, we have no tolerance for hatred and bigotry. And guess what? I'm glad they have no tolerance for hatred and bigotry. Unfortunately for me, I think that type of fan baiting, that type of intentionally rolling out something in the hopes of getting a reaction, I think is racism and bigotry. Quite frankly, it's using some of your cast as a prop. And I actually think, I do think it happens. Now, tracing back to the origins of this, I think cheap heat, you know, as they would call it in wrestling, um, is certainly nothing new. I think it's gone on for a while. I think the Ghostbusters remake probably opened some people's eyes to the idea of like, hey, some of the, you know, based on what Twitter and Facebook now are and their ability to be kind of really loud and the fact that we've got all these uh, grifters and, and people out there who are, you know, more than happy to jump onto the comments of, you know, racist lunatics and amplify them, you know, for their own, you know, lunatic means. Hey, the fact this entire thing exists means we can take advantage of it. And so you saw it with Ocean's 13 a little bit. That was the all uh, uh, girl remake. You saw a little bit with uh, the new Charlie's Angels. You saw a little bit with Birds of Prey. Um, you've seen this kind of tactic get rolled out. You saw it a little bit with Star Wars. Um, and it's, it, it's purely just a, hey, we're going to promote aspects of this movie. I mean, in some cases, and I've seen this happen as well, I think Star Wars did some of this, they went out the gate with, we don't tolerate racism. It's like there, there was no, like nobody was saying this. Nobody was talking about this thing. They did it with that little um, alien creature that showed up in, uh, uh, in uh, the Last Jedi, the the little uh, the the Maz, the the woman or the little female alien kind of giant eyes thing it was horny for Chewbacca, as I recall. I don't I don't remember, but um, there was this 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 weird little moment 
which I think a lot of people have forgotten, where um, people at Disney start rolling out the, we won't tolerate hatred against, um, you know, Asian voice actors. It's like, what? Nobody was talking about this. Like, literally nobody was talking about this. And then it, it shifted to, uh, you know, some of the other actors. It's like, look, uh, John, John doesn't deserve this racism. It's like, I don't think people are really talking about, uh, you know, Finn uh, as, as I don't think that, you know, of, of problems in the movie, the, the most common thing you heard about in regards to Finn was that there wasn't more screen time for Finn. But make no mistake about it. Um, you know, if you're going to go on the Internet, you're going to find racist, bigoted, hatred people. You're going to find these jackasses, and, and they exist. But the antidote to that is not to go all out in war with them. And when you're, when you're immediately ready to go to war with them, uh, it, it starts to feel pretty callous. Now, just, to, if, just for the sake of argument. No, I'm not saying you just let racist people shout racist things and, you know, that, hey, I can't do anything about it. Might as well let them be. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying fan baiting as a directed marketing campaign it, it, it's, it, it's drawing attention to your own film at the expense of someone else. Like I say, and I stand by it, I think it's as racist as the people who are out there overtly throwing out the N-word and other things to basically use, use people as a prop because of their skin color, and that's what a lot of this feels like. So here comes the big question, the other question in your mail. Is it effective? Well, no. I don't think it is. And that's kind of the baffling thing about all this is like I mentioned at the very beginning, comic companies doing things like printing too many comics every month. There is this belief of any publicity is good publicity. Um, you know, it's, it's that uh, any heat is good heat. Any, any controversy is cash kind of stuff. Eric Bischoff quote, but there's tons and tons of evidence that, that basically says, no, it's uh, it's not. It it doesn't pan out. Ghostbusters the remake was a failure. The Charlie the you know the Charlie's Angels remake was a failure. Birds of Prey did not. I mean, COVID hit a little bit from that, but it it, it also um, it it wasn't successful. You could argue Captain Marvel worked with this, but Captain Marvel is an MCU movie coming right before the. Uh, you know, Avengers Endgame was was going to make money. So there you could have just argued the whole thing was, un, you know, not necessary. You know, Last Jedi, eh, maybe successful there a little bit, but also caused a lot of strife in the in the overall franchise. Lord of the Rings, Rings Power, too early to say. I've seen plenty of videos out there like, it's a disaster. We, we don't know. The only, the, the arguments people are using to say it's a disaster are fall into... Look at all the videos of people who don't like it. And, uh, you know, Secret Source at Amazon says they're panicked. Uh, Amazon, for, for the record, now would they say anything else? Probably not. Um, continues to state that the show is performing well for its service. All right. But overall, fan baiting, this practice we've been talking about, it, it, it's kind of proven that it does not work. That as a surefire method of, of bringing in cash and bringing in viewers, it certainly generates a lot of attention, but it's a little bit like, you know, what we've seen sometime in comic books where people appeal to a specific audience. People, uh, you know, you'll see this uh, like, hey, you know, this is the type of comic reader we want. And you'll see lots of likes and lots of retweets and lots of Yaz Queen and all that kind of stuff on Twitter. But it doesn't translate to sales. The actual comic continues to kind of coast in 18,000 copies a month. And you're left wondering, where are all those Twitter people? Well, the same thing is really true with fan baiting. Um, you can bait fans. You can say, you know, there's no place for racism and bigotry in entertainment. And you're, you're right. There isn't. But just saying that doesn't mean people are going to watch your show. Lots and lots and lots of people standing up for Lord of the Rings on Twitter have no intention of ever watching that nerd shit on their streaming service. They don't even know if they have Amazon Prime. And you look at some of the comments and you see people going, I support this cast, even though this sounds like a lot of uh, nerdy Dungeons and Dragons stuff. So, okay, cool. 
that support is nice. But if this is a tactic that you want to uh, to work, you know, don't, you, you actually want people to watch your show. That's kind of the entire point. So uh, anyway, it's it's a very curious. Uh, so no, I, I don't think it works. I, I think there's there's maybe evidence, maybe that uh, you know on some occasions it, it might have been successful, but not enough to uh, you know it's it's like pouring gasoline on a fire. It's a bad idea, and I think if you uh, if you're if you're using this approach, you're asking for trouble. You're uh, basically you know leaving your marketing and your your product in the hands of of kind of random fate, which is dangerous. And it's, uh, it's destructive, but that's just me. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course, and thanks for listening.